For today's cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. Happy New Year's Eve. Yeah. What yeah. are y'all doing for New Year's? Yeah, what are you doing for New Year's? Y'all doing anything fun? Y'all partying? And I I've, I wonder what certain people in the family are going to be doing for New Year's. That Well, that's true. I mean, you know. I was looking, there's all different types of New Year's traditions and stuff. And so I went down a rabbit hole and I stopped when I got to this one rabbit hole. And this is about the ancient Romans. <coughs> because this thing about the Roman Empire, that has been going around social media for, what, about a year or so? Uh, yeah. Everybody's Asking Roman people. Empire. Yeah. Yeah. So... We're going to roll with that for a degree. And it said that the ancient Romans had a practice of making New Year's promises to Janus or Janus, J-A-N-U-S. And this was a two-faced God whose name has given us, the, would give us the month of January. Uh -huh. Okay, so from that rabbit hole, I went down another rabbit hole because I always have about 20 tabs open at the same time. Uh-huh. And then well, I wonder why my computer has a seizure ever so often. You also use Chrome, which bogs the computer down a lot. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, Chrome is a big, big, like, okay. CPU and just, it's a big CPU eater. Oh. It, it, eats, it eats power a lot. Well, maybe I need to work on something different for the coming year. You could try Edge. Edge is not that bad. Okay, I might do that. Anyhow, or from... Opera. Wikipedia. Brave. Um, I'm actually on start page. That's different than the web. That's that's a search engine, not okay. a web browser. Okay. I don't know. Because I don't know. I don't know. Anyhow, I'm trying to edify you about Janus. <laughs> and this was interesting because he was the god of beginnings, mm -hmm. gates, transitions, Time, duality, doorways, passages, frames, and endings. Okay. It's okay. actually fascinating when you when you uh, start studying about him, and he is depicted with the two faces, one looking to the future, and the other looking back at the past. Ooh, dang. Okay. So that made sense. Yeah. To see how things, you know, it's a, sort of like a Libra thing. Maybe it's why I related to it. It's the scales. Maybe. Trying to balance those scales and stuff. And it says that, um, hang on just a bit. I've got, like I said, I've got to figure out which one was which one. That Janus provide, uh, presided, rather, over the beginning and ending of conflict. Hence, war and peace. The gates of a building in Rome named after him um, is often called blah, 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 blah. Anyhow, the gates were opened in the time of war and closed to mark the arrival of peace. Which I found very interesting because you would almost think it would be the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And it said, as a god of transitions, he had functions uh, pertaining to the birth and journeys and exchange. And in his association with this uh, Portunus, a similar harbor and gateway god, he was concerned with traveling, trading, and shipping. All this stuff is stuff that's coming up in 2024. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Which is really odd. Is it though? Because like cycles, Earth cycles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been reset before. Mm -hmm. We have been reset before, and it says that um, on this this one thing that it used to be the Roman calendar, the the year started in March, but that Caesar reorganized the calendar. Uh -huh. And so January began the start of the year in, instead of March, and it was named after Janus or Janus. Okay. 
and and it's very peculiar because I, and, and a lot of this has to do with the solstices and the equinoxes yeah. and different things like that uh-huh. but winter you would not think that is the time where everything sleeps it's it's usually the time of uh, death not rebirth mm-hmm. that's usually in the spring which would be around march right most other cultures so what the hell was wrong with caesar that he he decided to do this i don't know I don't so know. Uh, that's i and did I a lot have, of things that is like yeah, wow yeah but i thought that was really interesting and the fact that this particular deity was over so many different things yeah there was not a greek equivalent to him really he was purely a roman deity huh so where did they come up with him that's you know where where do myths and legends come from we don't know that this wasn't some kind of you know nephilim or whatever we don't we don't know what it was but he was also supposed to go between he was supposed to be the one that went between the other gods and humans so again that doorway okay okay it was a really weird interesting thing yeah and as far as the different things that were sacrificed to him it was a matter of nothing bad dates figs honey and coins so basically just give him a bunch of fruit and money yeah yeah well dang he ain't hard to please no no this does not seem to be one of the ones that was heinous like some of the other ones were petty and heinous and yeah yeah it was like everything bad no it seemed like he was actually a pretty decent deity yeah so i thought that was like i said really odd yeah to go down that particular rabbit hole at this particular time in history do you think that part by any chance might be like their version of Jesus? You know, I thought of that. and Because um, Jesus is a doorway to Yahweh. He, he is. He is. And there's a lot of people that want to claim that it was, um, you know, these different things were taken from Babylonian deities and all these other deities and stuff like that. But there is historic evidence as far as the events in Scripture being accurate. Mm-hmm. that's one of one of the differences you know and that's i've been listening to that gentleman from oh my goodness he was from cambridge or someplace like that that he is brilliant and he has been debating uh richard dawkins about christianity okay he's an irish gentleman and he is brilliant all right. I don't. I don't know who. The, I don't. I'm on a different side of YouTube than you are. It's okay. I know you do watch. Like, have me watch them once in a while. Right. But when you listen to some of these people that are scholarly, and and I've been doing that for days. Not sure why, but I have. Well, it's I not, do that it's periodically. Not, it's not far off from. No, it's not. It's not. Because you've been known to go through these before. Oh yeah, uh, like my whole life yeah so it's not really that unusual no. it, it was interesting hearing the gentleman who was the exorcist the other day um speak and him talking about fear and how demonic spirits use fear mm-hmm. they feed off of it they they do but they also break people down their faith down through that and especially about events that we have no control over and if I remember, I'll put a link to that. Mm-hmm. But there was some information. That's why I sent you that link to your phone. Okay. That is very encouraging in these times. Because they try to not, they try to break people's brains. Oh yeah. They try to literally drive them crazy. Yes. Yes. Because as far as mind, body, and spirit, and as far as consciousness, where is that? That's the mind. I've asked many people, what's the difference between uh you know your spirit and thoughts and different things like that right 
and we understand how different thoughts can affect our spirits. Yeah. That's the reason the Apostle Paul was like, uh, you know, think on good things. Because yes. that's part of spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. But it was a really interesting something to uh, to hear. Because I listen to people, a variety of people. Why would I listen to just one or two? Right. I mean, you can't I get have internet. Just, <laughs> you can't get informa- like valid information from just one source. Right. But I also, because of the years of research that I have done, if someone is giving something that is inaccurate, I'm like, mm, no. And I can feel it in my spirit. Yeah, you can. I mean, if it's something that it's just like, mm, that doesn't that doesn't sit right. Yeah. And that's where you sit there and then you can, you go and you do other research and to make sure that you know what you think you know. Mm-hmm. The kids over there making large I noise love, with ice right in the mic. I love the, love the sound of ice. In the yeah. Mic. Yeah, I'm sure that everybody did that. Sorry. That. But we're a very simple group of people in our New Year's. I, I don't know where the partying thing came from. Maybe it's just to, ce- to celebrate the fact that they survived another year. Maybe. But the thing is, it, this is not... And Robert Phoenix has been warning about this for a couple of weeks. Do not, if you're going to go out and about and imbibe, get yourself a designated driver. This is not the time to be driving impaired. No. It's not the time. Understand that if you're not impaired, that doesn't mean that other people are not. Right. Right. And I have read so many. If you're going to go somewhere, walk. I have read so many stories this week about these horrendous car crashes. And I thought about what he said. Because I take some of these things, I'm like, hmm. So if if somebody that has more knowledge than I do and that has a proven track record to me, if I don't listen to them, doesn't that make me kind of foolish? Yeah. I think so. I don't... mm, I already mm. know what I know. I want to hear what other people know. Right. Right. (laughs) It's like, give me your knowledge. Yeah. Yes, because then that increases my knowledge. Right. And then I can help hopefully increase other people's knowledge. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's how you help make the world a little bit better. But as far as our celebration, other than than prayer, because that's that's an every year thing. We've Mm -hmm. done that for for a long time. Just simple. The Y-Files is supposed to have their live stream. Yeah. I'm going to make sausage balls. They had called me from the city of food. They have, as far as they grind fresh sausage every so often. Uh So to go over there and pick some of that up and just, so just finger foods. That sounds good. We we have our bottle of uh, sparkling wine that I was like kid where he was not feeling well on solstice. And so I had gone out with a cup of coffee and, you know, raised that to the return of the light. So we could we could have that, have a glass of that. He's not much on on drinking at all. Period. I, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a drinker. But this is that kind that that you actually like. It's it's a very nice fruity. Yeah, wine. it's it's a good, it's a pal palatable wine yeah. for me. Dry equals bitter. Dry equals bitter. I've not found it good. Yeah, I didn't make any. I've not found wine one this year. I've not found one drinkable red wine. Ah, uh, you know, I think you're right. I don't know that I have a sangria. That is the only drinkable. Is that really wine. a wed red wine? It is, but that's a summertime thing with fruits and and all that stuff. I mean, I, see, I. I like I said, I in my opinion, sangria is in a category all of its own. It's sangria. That's that's what it is. It's not wine. It's sangria. It is wine. But you've got to realize that the word sangria means blood. Okay. So it's a red wine. It's a fruit blood juice. Well, yeah. Yeah. We're drinking it fruit blood. Maybe it's like blood orange or something. It's more tasty than a blood orange. Fruit blood. It could be. That's what fruit juice is. That's what grapes are. Like, literally, grape. we're eating the blood of the grapes. Yes. 
Yes, if you really want to go down down that rabbit hole. Uh, but we're I'm, just I'm, I'm, into, I'm thinking like vampire goblet <laughs> drinking blood. Not that's just no. It's just wine. No, we just it's just fruit blood. Do sample fruit and juice. silly, which is basically what how our lifestyle is. Yeah. And it's like I think he forgot that it's like oh ice makes noise. Yeah, and I'm here like it's at my face and I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. <laughs> the only other thing that I wanted to wrap up on and I had forgotten the other day, I had watched um, the Little Drummer Boy, and I think that they said that this came out in 1968, mm-hmm. and it was. In the puppeting style, similar to Rudolph and um, some of the other ones during during that period. Was it the same company that, that I did think it? it was, and I don't want to scroll up because I'll lose what I was looking for. And let's see, unless I've got it right there. Oh, I actually have it right there. Yeah, 1968. And just absolutely brilliant. And it is heartbreaking. It is and it isn't, because if you've never seen it, you can find it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. That's where I had found it recently and watched it. Did you watch it for free? Yeah. Was it for free? Yeah, it was free. Ooh. And so... Did you see that Mickey is now, at least the original version of Mickey Mouse is public domain? Yes, I did. Anyhow, with this, and I'm going to do a little bit of a spoiler, that was a child whose, whose parents were murdered by bandits... And so he hated people, hated them. And he had animals. And and the only thing he had that his parents was they had gifted him this little drum. And so these, I I don't know, they were, you know, shysters with what they were, that they had sort of captured him and made him perform as far as food and different things like that. Yeah. And that they had painted a fake smile on him. Because he hated people. Yeah. And there towards the end, it was a matter of that he saw the the kings from the east that were going to see Christ. And that the the people that had, that owned the little boy had sold his uh, camel to these people. And so he had followed them trying to be with the camel. And he had this little lamb that was his, That those were his friends. The animals were his friends. Mm-hmm. And so they had, he had found where the kings were and that the lamb had, had run in front of this chariot, this Roman chariot. So it goes back to Rome. <laughs> yeah. And he had hit the lamb. And so the little boy had taken the lamb to, it wasn't dead yet, but it was in the process to the kings and that each one of them had said that they, you know, it's like I'm just a mortal king, but there's one here that could possibly heal the lamb. And this is where, if you've never heard the song, The Little Drummer Boy, about where all he had, to, the only gift he had was to play for for the Christ child, mm-hmm. which he did, and that the baby smiled. And so in the cartoon, the lamb was healed. And so there's there's lots of other meaning in there. This was actually a very deep little cartoon. Mm-hmm. And the thing that impressed me that I hadn't heard or hadn't remembered in previous viewings of it was the very end. And it said that Aaron, that was a little boy's name, Aaron's heart was filled with love and joy. And he knew at last that the hate he had carried there was wrong, as all hate will ever be wrong. For more powerful, more beautiful by far than all the eons of sadness and cruelty and desolation which have come before was that one tiny crystalline second of laughter. Damn. Yeah. Yep. And then it goes on and it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So let 2024, the world will do what the world will do, but as individuals, we can make the choice to let go of any kind of hatred 
any kind of bitterness that we have carried with us, just let it go. We do not have to let the past define our future. Yep. Final thoughts, kids. Never Kid. too never too late to change. No. I am a firm believer in redemption because I've seen it and I'm a product of it. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. That's so if you've it. had if you've had experiences with paranormal, supernatural encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, you can send us an email, cup of coffee with scream at gmail dot com. Link will be there in the description box, and I'll put uh, some of the other links. Hopefully, I'll remember it. <laughs> My voice is going in and out. Yeah, it's all right. You sick? I right thought now. I was getting better, and then it's like, and then it just nah, nah, comes back you, up. This shit hits you in ways. Nah, it ain't fun. <laughs> if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, comment. Most of all, take a damn cough drop. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one know that you're loved Uh and let's pray one for another and lord willing we'll see you on the next cup yes bye bye